Uh, I? Uh, sorry for the French accent. I hope everyone will understand. Um, so, uh, what is uh, being a system mean when you have to deal with Docker, with Node.js, with all this stuff? First, I'm system administrator. I work in a French uh, public services. Uh, and it's a research institute. So I have user very, 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 <laughs> wants very new stuff. Uh, that include being uh, the IT people, uh, the security people. Uh, it's mainly telling them, uh, no, you can't download with BitTorrent at work. <laughs> uh, I'm not a dev. I'm not a developer. I never learned how to develop properly. That was not my formation. Or DevOps. Uh, and I package for Fedora and Apple since uh, almost a year now. Uh, I will speak mainly about open source because uh, if you ever touch something proprietary for Linux, you will have nightmare. <laughs> so, why is that not? What is great? Okay. So, GitHub is great. See, it's easy. You can fork, you can download very easily the software, you can access the documentation, because it's all in one. You can report the bugs. Yeah. Docker is easy, is great. It's e very easy to install. You install Docker. Well, there is a little bit of configuration after, but you will have tons of software, tons. Every server thing now, you can find it on Docker, almost. You don't have to bother to find all the dependency, compile if it's not uh, available, the version is not good. You can would, would, uh, run the same instance on your laptop and on your server somewhere in the cloud. You can create your own image if you want, if you have uh, some personalization, or for your software, your project. And you don't uh, mess up with your space system you use every day to read your mail, uh, re respond to your boss, all that kind of stuff. And you have to explicitly uh, declare the port you want to use in the Docker uh, container, if I can. And as a security people, I think it's a good thing because it's, uh, it makes uh, User realize you cannot open everything on the internet every time. So there is so also something great. It's the language uh, library repository. Uh, things like Cpan, PyPy. Uh, for Ruby, it's uh, Ruby. It's Gem. When you can, when you have one per language. You have tons of library. And it will work everywhere if it's done properly. Even for some in with OSs like uh, Windows or Mac OS. Not for everything. So, when is the trouble beginning? You have all all of you have, have seen the taste somewhere. Too many places. Okay. You you really want to launch this on your laptop? On your personal laptop with all the data? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You your parents have told you well. <laughs> 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 Always be careful. <laughs> <laughs> well. A real world example, yes, yeah, there's the Docker documentation, there is so Dell. Well, I'm sysadmin, <laughs> I work with Dell hardware. Uh, open manage is, uh, it's to download Open Manage. Uh, it's a tool to manage uh, the hardware, uh, supervise uh, everything. And it's the official documentation, uh, certified. Uh, Yes, we all we all have seen uh, this on the install uh, installation. Well, 
I work a lot, a lot uh, with private network. So not at my l a lot of the server I manage don't have access to the internet. It's a choice. We don't want them to access to the internet. Only websites or some services are facing. Well, what do I do when I see an npm install and I launch it on a box who don't that does don't have internet? Well, it failed. Very good. So what can I do? I can have an internal mirror for every language existing. <laughs> you need time. <laughs> and place. Install the network who has access to the internet and move it on the net final. Yeah. For every update I will need to shut down the services, move the server, change changing the IP in update and remove. Okay. I can play with the proxies and the firewall to allow the downloading but not the uploading. Yes, that's what we do. Well, all of this is very time consuming and very resource consuming. And that's always a problem for CSM. <laughs> well, Docker, now. Docker has a lot of advantage, but yeah. A lot of uh, images for software are including not only the software, but also all the OSs of the dev of the laptop, yeah, of the dev laptop. Generally, the developer is making the images from his your his own laptop and pushing it on the Docker. Well, why it is an issue? First, it's not optimized; it will use more space, and it's generally not the one you are using. A lot of them are a lot of developers are using Ubuntu. We are running Fedora. <laughs> Who is not running Fedora in the room? Okay. And there is a recent study study where shows that more than 30% of the official image are not updated. They have major security issues. Shell shot say well ugly. <laughs> it's one year it was last year ugly. <laughs> and yet now we can still find images. And there is another issue uh, with specific to Ubuntu. It's uh, the Ubuntu license, and more specifically, the stuff about the trademark, who is uh, questioning it because uh, when you read it carefully, you can understand that you need to uh, have an authorization of Canonical to use uh, Ubuntu for your product you're selling, or you need to recompile everything. All the, all the distribution, not uh, just the packaging we're using. So, I don't know, but I don't find it very clear. On the other side, Fedora, uh, Red Hat, and CentOS have a very clear way to do it. There's only a few packages uh, uh, where the trend mark, uh, with the trend mark, and you can easily remove them or change them to your own it's what CentOS is doing. Well, you have your stuff, you have tested it, you are finding it good, you want to deploy it on your uh, company network or for your friend. Well, why not ma make your FPM? It will be easier. What can go wrong? Any idea? You can do it in copper, you can do it uh, in the main federal tree, when, but it's a bit longer for the main federal tree. Well, you have a C chromium, why chromium is not in Fedora? <laughs> well, no, no, chromium, uh, there is also uh, some licensing issues. I want to package this fun library for my users. It's a Python Python C, uh, scientific uh, scientific calculation, and I find my myself I have to package five or six other lab library in order to package the one my user wants. It can be a bit uh, 
extensive. And the fancy, fancy, especially with, I don't know why, but it's often, often with uh, Ruby. You have uh, stuff, we need uh, an older version, then the version in the distribution, and uh, no, they won't update it. Update it. Yeah. A reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> Reasons? <coughs> Ruby is is notoriously bad at preserve, at breaking APIs when they update the component. So. Yes, Ruby is uh, very bad for yes for, for that. It's breaking API rules. I repeat for the camera. And you have the licensing issue, where uh, there is a library we don't have a clear license, or even a license at all. Or Something will forbid the distribution, but oh yeah, we will just just put it in, inside. Yeah, for well, real world example, I know that uh, Hadoop will probably be retired from Fedora because uh, it became impossible to package. That's sad. I don't know if anyone has ever played with Hadoop. Uh, it's uh, written mainly in Java, yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, to do a uh, calculation uh, on why the you can, uh, yeah, it's um, cluster stuff. And another issue is uh, the release. A lot of projects, often the small project, seems to forget to do release regular on a regular basis they do a release call it uh, oh it's uh, 0 0.1 and after you package you want to package it you see there is bug and they say oh but it's on the main tree no no we don't make a release uh, it's uh, on the main tree uh, i want a clear version <laughs> um and there is sometimes another stuff with missing it's the documentation especially the upgrade documentation for software when you have a change uh, of the database uh, 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 schema, uh, schema, schema <coughs> in English, um, configuration change, and you don't have any warning, it's just, oh yeah, upgrade, oh yeah, we have changed uh, this, 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 this. Configuration has changed, uh, we don't use MongoDB, you, we switch to another thing. Uh, lot of documentation now it's the car run and configure <laughs> yeah where is the config file <laughs> in which language <laughs> where is the option yeah and to you need to find the config file and you read it extensively on your small terminal because everything in the is in the comments when it's up to date Or it's sometimes a blog article, more or less useful, more or less complete. You need to find a piece here, a piece, another piece here, and guess uh, what adaptation you have to make because you are the documentation is about the 0 0.2 and you are on the 0 0.4. Yeah, you can always find. And people are following these instructions. <laughs> <laughs> I see there is this admin mm -hmm. And it's stay online for oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I say, not very good to find that. Because it really is an object stuff. So it's where Docker, Atomic, or even virtualization with VMware then our betters are installing on the yeah for a reason. I see the yeah. you can do snapshot. You make your snapshot, you upgrade, everything is fine, okay. Everything goes wrong, I can still delete and go back on my snapshot. And work on it later. Not a Friday.
very fast as an acid. Finally, there are some good news. You can, when you are lucky, a lot of software are providing FPM. I was uh, well, not always packaging with a very, uh, very, there's very good uh, packaging. Sometimes it's you no know, PT slash, slash OPT. It's not always uh, respecting the federal guidelines, but well, they are not working for federal or or federal. When you are not too, too lucky, you get an archive that with clear installation instruction or SVN or Git repo and it's working. And now with systemd, it's very easy to create a system a service file, way better, way easier than with uh, so I'm with init uh, uh, with system five. Well, some projects even begin to provide one because uh, Ubuntu uh, Debian will switch to systemd soon, or has always already switched. So it's beginning to come out. And the bonus with systemd is you can re redirect very easily your login journal D and have, and have everything managed on systemd. And well, everyone has heard of Ansible, Puppet, yeah, or others. And now they all manage uh, very the Docker containers. They all manage system D services. They all do they no? No. <laughs> they deploy it. <laughs> Yeah, and for supervisions, it was never an issue. You just have to use measures, uh, thinking of what you are using. Uh, but sometimes it's uh, user user supervision. The mail at uh, four at six o'clock uh, Friday. It's not working. <laughs> you already no. <laughs> okay, uh, I was very faster than I think I will be. So uh, I would like to send uh, thanks the people on the Federal Verifier channel for the proofreading. And if there is uh, some orthographic uh, error, as they are mine, of mine only, I want to thank Air France and Boeing for almost making me missing my talk. I arrived. I was supposed to arrive yesterday. I arrived at uh, noon. Wow. <laughs> yeah. um, and everyone here to have listened to me. I hope uh, you have questions. So how did you feel that you were the developers in VM or Docker or whatever? Or? I will repeat first. Um, so the question is how to solve when a developer is using NPM or another stuff. I don't have the magic one. Uh, I explain him why it's not a uh, good idea for a sudden point of view, but I cannot forbid it. I don't have the test power. Uh, they understand generally when they are reasonable people. You can talk to developers. Uh, when they don't, uh, we generally finish with a um, uh, a server in what we call uh, experimental DMZ, where the developer installs his own OS and manages it, and we cut it when uh, there is a if the machine if the server is compromised, we cut it from the network and we experiment. Uh, and, but he has to be his own system. <laughs> yeah. We are that we are a bit uh, more, yeah. It, I work with researchers, so they need to have stuff very experimental. So we don't have the same rule for production and experimental. Experimental is very, very. Uh, they, they can use npm. We don't block it because uh, they will really need to be uh, with new stuff. I think one of the big challenges with Docker is. How much traditional 
IT administration and operation you can do or want to do because uh, many of these dynamic languages, and Docker takes this to extremes, end up deploying a black box as far as the operations are concerned. And from the developer's point of view, that's a feature. They get to package everything together and just deploy as a known quantity a tested unit. But from the sysadmin or the operation point of view, you have something that's running and no context, no manifest, no uh, workflow around it. And it's, if you, you do have, to have an image that has RP in there, you can't even tell without bending over backwards to reverse engineer what is in this blob that's appeared in your production network. Um, so what kind of approach do you take? You, do you simply give the developers that responsibility and let them be in charge of that side of your security, or do you try to add some level of um, guarantees above Docker that the production side? Uh, the question was about uh, so it's the was about uh, Docker in a production environment and how we deal with it to not end with black boxes on our network. Well, the answer is, it's a research center. The lot, uh, the few researchers who are using Docker, because not a lot, some of them are still using Fortran. <laughs> um, the researcher using Docker are generally the people we can talk with. <laughs> they are, uh, they are following the news, they are, and they understand the way they, they have a forge. They have a well, it's not GitHub because we can't use GitHub for a privacy reason. But uh, we have a forge, and they're, they're uploading their code on 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 a Git uh, instance. So when the development is working is done properly with some standard and a forge Git, you already f uh, you uh, deploy then your software on GitHub. You have a we have also, also um, continuous integration. So it's not very black box. We know what runs in, inside. And it's mainly, well, as it's a research center, it's mainly for the calculation, so it's not based on the internet. Right, so you don't have long running instances that no. have to be cleaned up 12, or installed 12 months ago and nobody remembers who, who, who made it. No, it's okay. more a researcher right. is setting up his environment and sharing it with the students. Uh, to do calculation on a specific uh, with a specific environment. It's research is a very specific environment. It's not an industry or. Do you have a certain preferred suit for developers? Like okay, if you do you know, Python and this framework and this OS and these packages, or just do whatever you want. <laughs> no, we don't have uh, specific. Uh, for uh, there is for internal development there is specific, but I, it's not my part. I work with a researcher. Uh, I don't manage uh, the uh, well. Uh, I don't manage uh, the financial applications that sort of thing. Uh, no, the researcher has, are very free because they are doing research in IT or in computer science. So they need to be free. Uh, we offer them for the new newcomers. Uh, the uh, the students uh, a formation we try to offer them formation about uh, best practice in development it's uh, on how to use docker uh, how to use git or SV svn but for the language it's really depend of the thematic of the, the team so we can't impose something we can't force them to use something Some teams are um, uh, forcing themselves. We have a team who uh, don't want to use C. They use Python. They could do things on in C. The issue that what they have said us is a few students know how to develop in C properly. A lot of students know Python. So it's easier to have a large um, a code well maintained to use Python than C. Yes, yeah, so that's probably the only leverage we have to explain them that it's easier sometimes to use a language because everyone knows it. Well, 
for an example, we are using camera here. You know what camera is? <laughs> okay, one person. <laughs> Uh, it's an uh, uh, imperative language, it's well, functional. functional language, <laughs> developed in France, so very popular in France, but only in France. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, in Edinburgh, and the original ML came from Edinburgh, so yeah. even the reason I had any exposure. Yeah. <laughs> any more questions? We have a few applications running in Canada in, inside, and we had switched uh, to Python because uh, it was unmaintainable. <laughs> Only two people, or one or two people, can, can work on it. <laughs> so, no? Well, uh, thank you. I hope uh, it was interesting for you. Uh, maybe let's uh, move for someone uh, for the next conference. <laughs>